<laughs> no glasses. No glasses, man. Uh, <laughs> hey, guys. How's it going? Um, this is the first episode, hopefully, of many of what I'm going to kind of call a podcast, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm here with my buddy, Dom. What's up, guys? Um, and yeah, how, how's it going? How's the day? It's going good, man. Had a good day at work, and now I'm ready just to chat and get lost in conversation. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, we'll start this bad boy up. Okay. So I figure, well, I, I actually have prepared questions because nice. I am a professional. <laughs> um, and the first one is going to be odd because it's one that I cannot answer. All right. Um, you know how people, especially in the, in the arts, have that aha moment of this is what I'm going to do, this is what I'm going to do? Okay. Because of my upbringing, music was just omnipresent and my dad was a musician, so it was just, I just did it. Right. Um, so what was your aha moment? What was that moment where you, where you kind of went, okay, music's going to be in me for the rest of my life? If you have that moment. If you don't, it's okay. <laughs> um, that's, I mean, all right. Christmas, I got the Slipknot Disaster Pieces DVD. Oh, and nice. I remember that night, like, I don't even know how old I was when that came out. 14 around mm -hmm. that age yeah, but yeah, like take. watched it that night mm -hmm. like, there's part of me just like what is going on then part <laughs> of me is like i love this and other part's <laughs> like let's do it yeah. you know i yep. put like all my chairs together as a percussionist said and it's nice. funny we we're just talking about slipknot mm -hmm. but i put some chairs together and i was like jumping around acting like i'm the percussionist and nice I'm Nice. So probably that moment, I guess. That that yeah, that seems significant. Yeah, yeah. And it, is that your earliest? Okay, rephrase the different. What's your earliest musical memory? Um, I mean, my brother always listened to, I mean, Guns N' Roses, Motley Crue, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so I'm Slayer, so I like kind of just always heard that. I guess in the yeah. background yeah and just kind of absorbed it and yeah and so i guess kind of it was just there always yeah so it's it a different way because he wasn't yeah. a musician like nobody really in my family is like a musician i guess someone can sing so that's the only musician but not even really play instruments so. okay okay probably just hearing it on the radio with mm -hmm. my brother um as young as seven was when i moved in with him so i guess cool. that's when i started hearing it cool. to answer your question in a better way <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, they get easier from here on in. Um, yes. What order do we want to go? I will go in that order. Mix it up. Um, what was the first album you bought with your own money? Ooh. Oh, man. <laughs> I'll give you some time. Mine was Motley Crue's Theater of Pain on cassette when I was about 13. I love cassettes of my brother, the one that like mm -hmm. gave me the music upbringing. He's still in his trunk, has like a box of cassettes because he has an older car. Mm -hmm. And I just love when I can drive his car because I'll just pick a random. You know, <laughs> he has a bunch of, you know, just random. I love picking the Crash Touch Dummies cassette though. Nice. I love listening to that. Yeah. It's so weird, but so awesome. <laughs> um, first album, I mean, the first thing that pops to mind is Linkin Park. Um, Hybrid Theory. Okay. But I don't know for sure. Also, <laughs> Slipknot, Iowa, that was mm -hmm. gifted to me, but I think I maybe went and bought it. Okay. So I think it's between those two. Okay. Cool. And we talked about this earlier, but what was your first concert you attended? Uh, Slayer. Uh, it was at Roy Wilkins Auditorium. I was like a young, young teenager at the time, so my brother got the you know the seats up high or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm used to general admission, so I don't. We were at the seats <laughs> up top, so... Um, Do you remember what show it was? Do you remember who they were with? Oh, my gosh. Um, that's going to bother me. I really don't remember <laughs> right now, but that's going to bother me. Because if it. if it happened to be in about 2010, probably not, because you're older than that. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I was going to say, then we may have been in the same show, because that was the uh, the uh, Megadeth Rust in Peace 20th anniversary tour. Okay, yeah, no, it was... Oh, it was before that. Okay, okay. Because, yeah, no, I was like 13, 14 around then. I'm going to be 30 in two months, and it's still weird to say. Um, 
dude, I just turned 45, so it's okay. <laughs> I'm officially been late. Um, uh, okay, what was the what was your first drum kit? I still have the kit. Um, I really used it for my first couple shows. Um, <laughs> my first kit. So I like wanted to play drums early teens. Um, it started with me tapping on tables. As it does. My, my family was like. <laughs> We got to get something. Stop doing that, bro. They didn't even want to give me the drum set because they didn't want to hear the noise of it. They're just like, like, stop. That's why I took the chairs and I only did it when family wasn't around. Right, right. You know, so nobody knew I secretly had this drum set I made of chairs and it was all set up. But um, I think I was 16, and 15, 16, mm -hmm. and for my birthday, my family together, they found a drum set at a garage sale for like 500 bucks. Nice. It's a Tama. I don't know anything further of that. Oh, is um, that, that the kind of bluish green the one? The teal that, one. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. I call it teal. It started out as like yeah. green, but I think as the sun hit it. Or it yeah, like blue it fades it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sun faded, and I finally then moved in with my cousin where I could play it mm -hmm. every day, and she loved when I could play it because nice. she didn't care. She, I was in a, it was a three-floor house, and mm -hmm. I was at the very top at Oh, nice, nice. She was yeah. at the main level, and she didn't care that she could hear it. Nice. She was like, as long nice. as he's enjoying what he's doing, he <laughs> loves this, and it's like... He's not out doing bad things. Let him do it. So Perfect. That was my Perfect. first kit, and rocked ever since. She's still going. I actually just uh, took her apart last week because I brought the infamous kit, the red kit, mm -hmm. which um, was gifted to me. That's like my second kit. Okay. So I just got that two years ago. Yeah, I remember when you got that. Lou yeah. got that from me for oh. uh, Christmas, and he just got that super cheap, like a couple hundred dollars from his old boss or whatever. So Lou's a good dude, man. Yeah. <laughs> So. Mm -hmm. Very cool. The Tama and uh, what's that one? A pearl. First two kits. Nice. Nice. What was your first kit? Uh, my first kit was a Red Sparkle Ludwig Classic. Ooh, I love red. Um, do you still have it? No, unfortunately, I do not. I, I, I got in the bad habit of not keeping kits once I got a new one. Okay. Which I should have just held on to one. Because <laughs> my first kit was that one. And I got that when I was about 12, I think. Okay. And I came back from my uh, visiting my grandparents in Iowa and came back and walked downstairs to go get something. And there's a drum kit sitting up and I didn't think anything of it, Okay. you know, because I'm <laughs> oblivious and went back upstairs. And, and my dad literally had to take me downstairs and said, this is your because uh, he was playing with the drummer who had a double bass kit and it okay. was half of his. Gosh, yeah. Um, actually, excuse me. Talk amongst yourself. Yeah. I love you all, people. You guys are awesome for watching. This is a good time. There's like a cool music shrine here, so I like, feel like I'm at a bunch of different concerts. And, like, <laughs> all at the same time. It's like time travel, but better. But actually, I, I, I'm, my mom sent me a bunch of pictures, and I actually have a picture of that. Oh, nice. Pictures of that kit. With, you get it? with my little cousins playing on it because they came to visit. And of course, I had a drum set in my room, so they all had to. Yep, yep. Because that's what you do. Um, I actually make everybody, like, when they come to the practice space, come to wherever I have a kit. Mm -hmm. If someone's visiting, I'm like, you have to play. And they're like, well, I can't play. And I'm like, I don't care. Just do it. Yeah. Because you know, everybody, like, that doesn't play drums, they want to play a drum oh, yeah. set, but they're afraid because they're like, just because they can't move their limbs like us. Right. They think they're not titled to play. Right. But that's the right way to say it. So I'm always like, do it. Because I'm yeah. going to sit down and take a break. So I'm like, 10 minutes to go. <laughs> play. It's not going to sound good. I don't care. Just do it. Yeah. If I force people to play. That's actually not a bad way to go. Because, yeah, I mean, when you're introduced to music, everybody wants to be a drummer. That Because that looks like the fun job. Honestly. Which it is. <laughs> it's, it's hard, but it is fun. Um, yeah, so I had that kid for a while. And then I got a, I found at Music Around a four pack uh, shell pack of a clear Ludwig Vestalite with with um, a six and eight concert toms which okay. were painted black and I got the black paint off and turns out they were uh, clear blue Ooh. and I got all that for like 220 bucks or something That's nice. back in like 1994 <laughs> um, and then uh, 
eventually I got my uh, my PDP. Okay. Um, it. So. Anyway. I bet you weren't expecting me to ask you a question. I kind of was. I was kind of hoping you would just to draw this out. <laughs> um, I think I know the answer to this, but I'm going to answer anyway. What was your first band? Well, what's your guess? My guess would be infamous, but I think maybe I'm wrong. No, um, with Lou, uh, Serenade the Flame. Oh, okay. Um, that was the start of it. It was kind of like a harder rock, um, alternative rock. I was mm -hmm. kind of meshed like a Chevelle and Queens of the Stone Age kind of vibe. I don't okay, know the okay. right way yeah, to yeah. Like, yeah, put yeah. it, but yeah. um, it was a three-piece. Um, well, we had a bass player at one time, but we were having troubles. We only mm -hmm. played one show, so I mean, we didn't mm -hmm. take off as... <laughs> Well, as we wanted, but we mm -hmm. had a whole album and everything ready to go. We started to record it. Um, wow. There's two guitars, no lead and a rhythm. Mm -hmm. um, singer played lead guitar or rhythm. He did the solo. So yeah. I don't really know how to explain that. <laughs> drummer. Uh, but uh, we played one show, and it's um, it's really ironic how it happened. So this was like 2016 or 17. Okay. Maybe 15, 2015, 16. We played a show in Superior. And the dude who put it on was Aaron White, who does Waspos. He sets up Waspos. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, But, like, I wasn't introduced to the scene at all, so mm -hmm. I didn't even know anybody. <laughs> um, so we played that show, and um, Lucid Flight, they were on the bill. Okay. So I didn't know who they were. Um, and that's <laughs> they're, how they're I heard awesome, about Trey. That's how I heard about Trey. Okay, yeah. Uh, because yeah, yeah. he was going to fill in for Urination as their drummer. Gotcha. Okay. So I had talked to him because it was my first show. I got mm -hmm. super nervous about stuff and didn't know how I would be hearing things. So I was talking about mm -hmm. in-ears and stuff. So that was kind of the takeoff of Into the Scene mm -hmm. and um, my first show. And then the band kind of went downhill. Me and Lou actually still get together every Monday and we jam and got some stuff in the works. Nice, you know, nice. That's, it's some fun stuff I like. But, um, yeah, Serenade the Flame was the first band, and then um, Infamous Matt met me, and mm -hmm. was like, let's do it. And because that's what Matt does. <laughs> do Matt He's does like, now. you, here, come, now. How okay. I'm <laughs> glad I could stump you on that one. No, that's good. And that answers my other question, which is what your first gig, and you just explained yep. it. So. Um, weren't you also listed on your facebook page aren't you listed in my north no no so okay i've heard of, i've heard of my north but i've not heard their music okay um, actually they're playing the grand city festival coming up are they they are okay because um, i have like an ep of theirs that i acquired somewhere and it's okay. pretty good it's pretty good i have to um, check it out but um no that's going up north oh going up and i know it was something north yeah and that's me and lou that's the red oh, okay okay of Saturday the Flame okay gotcha. after our singer left kind of didn't know mm -hmm. where to go so going up north the abbreviation gun was what we were going for gotcha. okay okay just happened to be we're in minnesota you know, <laughs> north. Kind of deal, yeah. So. yeah 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 and you pl scene. play all your shows you know north of st cloud <laughs> <laughs> oh well shit that's all equipped. i mean except for talking about current what you have going on now which we could go into because you just yeah. recently retired we're, we're, we're call it a, a taking a hiatus yeah, yeah. Um, uh, from infamous and from playing uh, for a while yeah from gigging um, yeah I mean, do you want me to just kind of oh, please so I mean in July met Brittany um, mm -hmm. been dating ever since mm -hmm. well, I met her way before that but that's well, when yeah. we officially yeah. started dating yeah. sorry it was July um, but um, you know things were really good and we actually have a place now together mm -hmm. uh, with our daughter too so it was just really hard to find the time mm -hmm. to, you know, balance a home life and then practice with your band life, which mm -hmm. we, you know, Infamous is ready to take that next step to go on the oh, road yeah. and, yeah. you know, do all that stuff. I felt it was selfish to me to, you know, I didn't have the right income, I'm, you know, not mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. spot to put money into something when I don't know if I should right now because I also right. have other people to ask hey is this smart to do this right now no, you absolutely. know so absolutely man. Yeah. I was having a hard time with that balance and then as a musician I was having a hard time you know with trying to write new material well how when can I sit down and actually mm -hmm. practice and become a better drummer because right you know so many times and you know I try to remain humble all the time mm -hmm. you know I'm not gonna always say I'm the best drummer but I'm not gonna say I'm the worst drummer right but I think I have room for improvement 
you know. I think I, every drummer on the planet has room for a purpose. Which I'm, I'm learning that. <laughs> you know, I think all musicians will say they always have something they can learn, but mm -hmm. when I have something in my head that I really want to play, we'll just take my feet. I really want to go mm -hmm. steady that long. Yep, I yep. can't do that right now. You know, my left foot is not as strong as I would like it to be, so right, I want right. to sit down and do that and, until I can get to that spot and be where I hear myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. thought it was right just to take some time off. Yeah, just to yeah. focus on myself as a musician. So I'm not giving up music at all. I'm still... Oh, I'm, no, not at all. My not laptop right now it has FL Studio and I'm producing beats and trying to just appreciate music more in a different aspect. Mm -hmm. right yeah, now. no, absolutely. I, trust me, at the end of last year when I was in like four bands and had, was playing like, you know, five, six shows a month, I was like, if I could just take a month off and not do anything, right. that would be awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and now this year, it's kind of turning into that. So, <laughs> but you're doing great at it, man. But you're yeah, awesome. um, you know, we do what we can. Mm -hmm. we can. Um, but yeah, yeah. So, what else can we talk about? So, what was the what was the recording like with Infamous for the for the this one's for Chuck EP. It was where, where did you do it? We How did you do it? it at IPR. Okay. Um, Dane from Ruin did the recording. Okay. Um, it was a different um, setup than even what I was used to, which is that recording at home, mm -hmm. do-it-yourself stuff. Um, uh, did different areas first, and just it was just a different setup, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. it wasn't bad, but just something I wasn't used to, so it was out of my element. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. just being in a room, you know, it was fun. I loved it because... Me, I'm not a stay up late person, mm -hmm. but when you can stay up late and you know you hear the music being recorded and all that, it's awesome. Yeah, as soon as you hear the tracks back, you're just like, oh, we did that. <laughs> yes. You know, it's awesome to have that CD. I still have the CD at home. Like I had to mm -hmm. make sure I kept one. You know, oh yeah, just yeah. Say I did this because who knows what I'm gonna do it again? JK. <laughs> it again. Um, but um, it, it was fun. Um, we were all were there, of course. Mm -hmm. It was late mm -hmm. at night. It's awesome. Just jam because to me it's jamming oh yeah no absolutely, absolutely it made me that's the one thing that does upset me with me stepping away because the infamous is at that spot right now ready to record some new stuff and mm -hmm. work on more stuff to get everything else finished and i wish i you know had it in me mm -hmm. to stay longer to do all that because it was so fun the first time oh absolutely and absolutely, you know yeah. the next time you can do stuff differently that you wanted to do maybe the first time that you mm -hmm. didn't do but that time will come when that time oh, is yeah, right. Yeah. You know, so. And I wish them the best whenever it happens. You know, oh, of course, yeah. yeah. Support I mean, that and be at that show, you know. Yeah, no, I mean, that. as I've spoken about many, many times, it's all about supporting. Yep. It's all about just getting out there and, you know, and if you're in a band, if you're not in a band, if you're not in a band anymore, um, as long as you, you know, everybody's cool and, you, right. and there's no, you know, animosity. It's all love. Then, you know, oh, yeah, absolutely, man. Um, oh, so I'm considering, considering going to Wasco's this year. Do it. Do it. Tell do me what it. to expect. Cause I know you've been there at least once, <laughs> if not twice. I've been there twice, um, both years playing. So going this year will be fun cause I won't be playing so I can enjoy it in a different aspect. In a different of, sense, oh, yeah. Oh, my gear's here. I have to worry about my gear. Right, um, you can just go there and say, oh, no, I'm not <laughs> saying you have to worry about your gear. I'm, th I'm thinking more weather-wise. Well, you know, no, you absolutely. That, yeah, because, you know, you know it, is, it is out in the middle of nowhere in Wisconsin. And, oh, yeah, it rained both And years. in September, so, you know, western, weather's always Can't questionable. Just get flooded, man. You know, really <laughs> um, expect late nights if, you know, depending where you camp. Um, mm -hmm. Expect a lot of fun at any time, any hour. I was the guy who was getting drunk at like eight o'clock in the morning <laughs> so i was going to bed super early in the night mm -hmm. while everyone else stayed up later like i did the opposite yeah you were on the morning shift they were on the night shift. yeah yeah you, know, um, you had to hold it down in the morning but it, i mean it's a lot of fun and then when the music starts that starts at like noon one o'clock yeah you yeah. know when that goes until like 11 midnight it's awesome i i've heard i've heard good things i've heard i won't say horror stories but uh my good <laughs> Very fun stories, don't you? Well, yeah. and, and, and and you know, every year somebody inevitably posts some sort of video, and I'm just that's why I'm in that debate of going, 
I really want to go and experience this, and then I really just run a one as far away from this as possible because it looks scary. <laughs> I'll tell you this. All right, I will tell you this. It is very easy, and I know this. <laughs> it is very easy if you need to have your own time to make that happen. Okay. Like, any time that I need to be by myself, like, mm -hmm. I, in my head, I'm like, oh my God, someone's going to knock on my tent, but nobody did. You know, I knew where to keep my distance when I was. Okay, so, cool, know, so cool. That, that it's is not cool. like you're engulfed by it. You right. Know, there's no way out. No. So you're only engulfed if you want to be engulfed. Exactly. Okay, okay, exactly. That, that is good to know. You only black out if you want to black out. Well, uh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, and, and you have I talked about the fact that, that alcohol is not my friend most of the time, so. Yeah. Actually, no, I recently stopped drinking alcohol, too, just to. Mm -hmm. Just as a clear that out and get that level head. Yeah, no, absolutely, many absolutely. Days, but I can think even Mason's Metal Fest, and that was a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. That was one of the first shows that I only had water and coke. Nice, and that was cool to me. Like I didn't mm -hmm. want to drink there, you mm -hmm. know. So it's all about the fun you make, man. Exactly, exactly. And and hopefully, and the, these guys. I don't know if you guys can hear what we're listening to. This is Jaden James and the Hunger. You should check them out. There, I, actually, I might uh, throw some CDs at you before you leave. Um, uh, I like a link because because I don't know if you have this, but I've discovered this, especially going to shows. When you see a ton of people that you know that you're friends on Facebook, but I've never spoken to, and it's just like I know you, kind of, sort of. <laughs> yeah. So I'm starting to actually meet a lot of these people now, which is very cool. But my problem is, like, even at, I think it was at, at, at Mason's, um, somebody came up to me and introduced himself and said, good to see you, Ryan. And I was like, hey, good to see you too, man. And I, I have no idea who the fuck it was. Hey, that's me. He it's looked me familiar. It's so like, I know I know you, but I have <laughs> no idea what your name is. Um, and, and I'm just hoping that by going to shows this summer, I'll build up more more can i and actually know people yeah so that if i decide to go to wasco's and see people there i can actually yep. like hang out and interact with them and yeah and in that sense not just in a hey i kind of know you kind of way right you know mm -hmm. you know i mean i definitely i mean i have that issue i mean where i i feel like i'm socially awkward like mm -hmm. i i know how to talk to people mm -hmm. but like when i get to shows i just get in this weird like i don't know what to say and like when I conversate, I'm like, I don't know when to walk away. Are we done talking? Should we keep talking? Yeah, no. What do I mention now? You know, so yeah, me, I had yeah. so many. What, yeah, when I go to shows, as long as the band is playing, I'm fine. But but it's that 15 minutes between that I'm just like, okay, go to the bar or, you know, and, go and get a drink and maybe go outside and maybe look around for people. Go, you know, go blow my phone. Some of that too is us being a drummer too. We want to get antsy in a way. That is true. That is very true. We're used to yeah, so no, no, very true, very true. Like, well, I do. <laughs> but I mean, I also, too, I mean, I'm still, I mean, maybe three, four years into the scene. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'm still meeting people. And, you know, I'm well, still see, not that far behind. Of and that's, it. that's the funny part, because I only got back into the scene probably four years ago. Okay. So we're probably on the same level yep. on that side. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of cool. That's awesome. <laughs> we can be awkward together, too. It's okay. <laughs> I, I embrace it, man. That's, I, I just know it's going to happen, so it's like we can't really run from it. Well, just no. Let it happen. And, and again, everybody. I'm trying, I, I don't think I've met any assholes in the scene. Like, everybody that I've run into is just so like freaking cool. can be an asshole. I can well, be an asshole. Well, potentially. But nobody's been an asshole to me yet. That's good. Um, no and everybody's an just so too. cool. You're too I good, mean, man. <laughs> I try. You um, show so much love. You show so much love to people. Like you, you're always like sharing stuff on Facebook, and that's awesome because that's spreading it to people. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how it's word of mouth. That's how it travels. So, I mean, no one can be an asshole. Be someone who's supporting. You that, know, that is, yeah. you're not doing anything. Um, you're doing anything wrong, my friend. But the one thing I've always said, it's kind of like, and I've said this on so many of these videos, it's kind of like. I don't understand why more people don't do that. It's so simple. Do what? Share stuff. Oh, yeah. 
you know, it's kind of like Greg praises this. I praise this. It's it's just like you're on there anyway. We know you're on there anyway. Right. We know you're seeing the stuff. Just hit the share button. That's all you got to do. You don't even have to, make a don't even have to like it. Share. Don't even have to put it. Just share it. It's mm -hmm. not that hard. Um, especially if you, you know, claim to be right. so into the scene yep. as you are. It's kind of like, yeah. But, you know. That made me not think about it. I remember when I was doing my, like, <laughs> shirt support, you know, mm -hmm. like, every day. But I also was running into, like, I had so many of, like, the same band. So then I was like, well, do I, like, do this band again? Is it a different t-shirt? I was like... <laughs> well, yeah. And, well, and that's the odd thing. Because I, I, I know uh, Rob uh, used to be in Don Infierno, used to be in, in Semtex. Yes. or whatever? I can't pronounce he, it. I'm sorry. He's he, in Andraste's Rage now. Yes. Yeah. And the first word I can't pronounce. Um, well, I haven't seen him, but I, I mean to see him. Um, but he, he's been doing a shirt of the day and I'm like, I thought about that, but then I did a whole video where I showed every single shirt I own and like 10 people watched it. Aww. So it's just like, <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know what the answer is. Exactly. Exactly. Cause I'm certainly not doing this for the, for the subscription and the likes. <laughs> oh question for you now. Let's okay, just, go for it. Go, off the go for it, man. All right, we're going to stay locally, guys. Well, as we, as I tend to do. Regionally, at the very most. Yeah. Because there are like, a lot of kick-ass bands from Wisconsin and Iowa and the Dakotas. And, and nobody take any offense to this <laughs> oh, because it's, no, and I'm not even going that, you know. Okay. But just if your your band's not mentioned, don't take it that way. Oh, no, not at all. just not personal all. preference. Yeah, yeah. Your top three favorite bands. Oh, That is difficult. I'll let you think about it because I can't answer mine. Do you want to break it down by genre or just across the board? It's, we already had that talk about genre. <laughs> you can't do genre, man. Like, well, can I put Hex Vortices, Jaden James and the Hunger, put, and, and, and yeah, uh, Night of Joy in the same... Yeah. If that's your top three favorite... If that's, you know, my, your, my top three changes all the time. Mine does too, but there's... Top uh, five. Top five changes or if top three? My my top anything changes. And, I mean, and, and I, I, should, I, I have should. a few bands like Hex or Vortices will always be my favorite metal band because they fucking kick ass. Okay. Um, and their old school thrash, which is what I grew up on, okay. so they speak to me. Um, Jane James and the Hunger is just incredible. If you like R and B soul stuff, yeah. you have to check them out. You have to go see them. They're playing at the Dakota on Friday. Um, what else did I say? Oh, Night of Joy is is my buddy's band. I used to work with them. Uh, at the firm I'm at and they're just like they describe themselves as as noise rock which is kind of accurate okay. um, because it's rock that makes noise there's a lot of there's a lot of distortion a lot of feedback in okay um, actually the playlist I created for this is all local stuff but all different local stuff like hardly any metal at all This is the modern era. Okay. Who are? They're from the cities. I think they're from Ridgefield. Okay. At least that's where the package came from. But when the singer sings, he almost sounds British, like a okay. British kind of thing. Um, oh yeah, here, here's Night of Joy. Who's this again? Night of Joy. Okay. Distortion on the vocals, yeah, yeah. intentional. But okay. it, it's cool stuff. So it's got like it reminds me of like the like Scott Pilgrim must die kind of vibe. Yes, like, yes, totally, totally. It's kind of like Sex Bob. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> so what else can we talk about? Talk about anything you guys want. Self world. <laughs> See, we really should be doing this live because then we get comments and, and ask for questions. <laughs> Next time. Yeah. Next time I see you, we're gonna do we're gonna do something wherever we are. It doesn't matter. No matter what state we're in, we're just gonna. <laughs> yeah, Even if you wanted to cut this right now and go on your phone, go live. I don't care. Oh.
Oh shit, we should do that, yeah. Okay. So let me grab my mouse seat. Okay, so this is gonna end what I'm gonna post later. Uh, but we're but we're gonna go live. We're gonna go Facebook live and, and see what the fuck happens. Hope you guys are there and I'm gonna put my glasses on so I can get stuff. <laughs> see you guys later.